It might be spooky season, but it's not spooky in our studios. Coming to you from Sat Lamar is the hour stream. How are you, Hagen? I'm doing okay. There was a little tidbit of thing. There's a little like fact I had ready for one of our segments, and it was about ghosts, but I took it away because I thought it was silly. Oh, um, and then you said this scary thing. Away? Yeah. Oh, well, spooky season, hey? We're in October. Woo! Doesn't mean we're stopping anytime soon. No. Uh, so we are excited to be back. And now we were off a couple of weeks between going to the Future Fest, to not showing you a few of the recordings, live recordings that you did in Dallas. <laughs> uh, so we're excited to show you our last recording we have on the books today. Mm. Very special guest. Always very You'll special. be surprised. Oh, she well. or he. Might be in the office. Ooh. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> uh, but before we go jump into that, what's what's R and D up to? Also I'm glad you got my reference. And I you. do. Yes. Yes. Uh, we. I have finished the embodied carbon. Well, five about time, you right, know, guys? Woo! It really is. And then I realized there's a a plugin for ChatGPT that actually actually finds correct uh, journal does, articles. Does so that would have been helpful. Uh, I mean, yeah, that's oh, the whole nice. point of it, right? Nice. Um, but that report is done, so so we're we're trying to f- um, kind of summarize it, give like a little like uh, quick like two pager so, f- so people can read it, or if they want to dive into the details, they can go to the the actual big journal looking article mm-hmm. thingy, and then seeing else might, where uh, where might else we put it, where nice. we might also put it. Hmm. So you can just double click into it just to like dive deeper into. Yeah, it that's, nice. that's that's a better way to say it. Um, and some other things that are somewhat related, uh, the software procurement process. I don't think we've mentioned this yet, but uh, communications sent out a little email regarding it. But it's kind of how to, if you, if your team needs a new software, um, you know, looking, you know, how you get that process going, you know, how you can get that process approved and and f- funded and provided to your team. So that's on that's on the playbook. If you didn't see the email, um, mm-hmm. it just links to that article, and. Accounting wanted to shout out that there is an accounting help at r-o.com email, similar to the the support desk, right, Mm -hmm. for IT and for OPEX. They have one as well. Really? (laughs) Yeah. I actually did not know. That'll be on the next uh, next (laughs) one. But um, so the accounting help, so if you have, you know, primarily for operations folks, I believe, if you have kind of some, if you need an accounting help, right, just you can just email that little help desk and they can so if I want to raise an you. expense that I did just reach no, out no I think that's no I don't think that's uh, that's part of it they might be able to help you but then you also might get fired so no pew, pew, pew. but is anywho that? <laughs> that is uh, that's, that's that's primarily the updates that I, I wanted to talk about what updates did you want to talk about me well thank you for giving me the mic uh, there's a couple things happening around the our office Ooh. Uh, kind of big thing this week. I don't know if you saw another email or just aware of the industry news. This week is Construction Inclusion Week. Oh. Uh, and I was a big believer of this, that every individual has the right to work in an environment that is free of from harassment, hazing, and bullying. Uh, and if you're interested in partaking in this week, an RO does have two things that they share with us in oh. the email. Oh, uh, nice. So tomorrow, October 17th, there's a Breaking Barriers in Construction. It's a webinar with AGC. Hmm, so you can nice. join that. Uh, you can join from your couch right here, the right studio here. downstairs. Your Just home. join us. Join us. You might see us online. Uh, and then Thursday, October 19th, our very own Kevin Porter. Yes, he was on the show. Oh, he was on the show. Uh, he's gonna he brought us cookies. Show us uh, our sculpture of care in a little propel session. Uh, you, have you logged into Propel anytime soon? I have logged into Propel sometime soon. Last week. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. well, make sure to check this one out. Okay. I cannot go because you have another training. That's correct. <laughs> uh, but if you're interested in uh, participating in any of those two things, feel free to sign up. Uh, so that's a big thing. There's two, three more things. Uh, kind of exciting news. Uh, you know how we are all about integrated career paths here at Aro. Yes. We recently have a new Alex Weaver. A new Ops. Alex Weaver. I know, it, the sound <laughs> threw me off. We have a new person in the VDC team, uh, Alex Weaver. She's coming from operations. Mm. And she's going to be joining us for a couple months here, but she's the newest member of the VDC team. Oh, that's very exciting. Oh. I know. So if you see her walking around or at a job site supporting 
our specialists, make sure you say hi. Like this. Hi. Um, so there's that. And then another email. There's a lot of emails coming from communications Check nowadays. Those emails, uh, maybe. Two more email announcements. The first one is the with the annual performance reviews have begun. I'm sweating over here. It's okay. And it's not the sweat. I'm pretty sure you won't get a bad review because yeah. your boss loves you very much. Oh. Oh. Uh, oh. But yes, if you saw that, those, those began October 11th and they go all the way to October 25th. So you have a, a, about a week and a half starting from today. So make sure you log in to UKG Pro and perform yourself away <laughs> all right. in that annual assessment. Uh, second and last update from communications, there's a VDC Innovation Station Challenge. Ooh. Innovation Station. Uh, do you want to tell us about it since you're in charge of the Innovation Station? Uh, no, I was not in charge of creating that challenge. So, Do you know about it? I do. I think oh, I might have submitted an idea it. to it. No, you got it. Oh, okay. Well, <laughs> well this challenge is meant and identifying creative and kind of practical uses for VDC, not only in our own, but also in the industry. Uh, so it's meant to be very short and quick. You don't need to do a whole description. Just a quick one line or two in the title should do it. Uh, and if you're, you're kind of undoubtful or, or doubtful about what to submit, just ask yourself kind of these two questions to kind of guide you through it. Uh, try to finish the question of our VDC team used VDC technology to do blank and or what if VDC could do blank. <laughs> so if any of those two questions or statements trigger a, an idea, feel free to submit that idea right into an innovation station. All right. Uh, so I do believe the challenge goes up until December. A long time. And we plenty have of time to get those ideas. Plenty of time to, no for excuses. me to keep messing up this challenge announcement every week. We got plenty of time uh, to get it right. <laughs> yeah. And there's a total of $6,000 up for grabs. 6K? 6K. Wow. And it only takes, <laughs> it only takes like about 10 Took seconds. me like 10 seconds, yeah. Mm. There you go. I don't know if you can win. Can you win? I guess you can. I didn't, yeah, I didn't. I, have, I, I oh, didn't nice. even know uh, about the oh, challenge. Wait, oh, hopefully the judge picks your idea. Hopefully. <laughs> but that's all I have. I know a couple of handful of announcements, so I apologize for the delay. Uh, These are important announcements. They are These are the important. things people need to know. They are. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, but that's all we have in the announcements aisle. Uh, but you know what it's time for. It's time to turn down another aisle. And spin the wheel. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Can I'll you spin, spin it? it? Yeah, I don't. My arms aren't that long. I wish. Well, actually, not really. Woo! Hard hat Bad questions. questions. Reaching again. My that one's that far baby. away. <laughs> We can we can Jeez. do another one if you want. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. We don't even know what's in that hat. <laughs> Probably like a dead mouse. <laughs> Yay! Hard hat question. <laughs> Oh, Ooh, hot takes. Hot takes. Oh, uh, well, again, I was thinking about this one when I was eating lunch today. Mm. Uh, I had a sandwich. Excellent. A Mitch. And I had some cheese in it. And it got me thinking. Uh-huh. If you were to find some cheese in your fridge. Yes. And some. only the corner had some friendly fungus in it. Mm. Would you eat the cheese after ripping off the corner of the cheese? Well, it's funny that you ask that because I did that this morning we for my breakfast. Oh. For my breakfast, not for my breakfast. <laughs> Made a little open face, <laughs> open face sandwich with some eggs on top. But uh, yeah, there was about probably 10% of my cheese had some, some mold on it. But I just kind of ripped it off and then, woo, threw the cheese on. See, I don't think I could, woo, do that. The, the rest uh, of it was perfectly fine. But yeah, but then there's little spores that like still fly around uh, yeah. and land on it, right? So it just, it's, it's good for you. Makes you stronger. Good, yeah, good gut yeah. tummy help. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm know. guessing you wouldn't eat it. No, I'm too. It's also like I had a lot healthy of cheese. <laughs> like if I get like the, the H-E-B like pre-sliced cheese and there's a lot in there. And it's just very wasteful. I don't want to waste all that cheese. Just eat it sooner. <laughs> that would be a good solution. But it's a lot of cheese. I can't eat that much cheese. Buy less cheese. There seems to be a solution to every. It comes pre I can't. I can't. Make your friend a sandwich. Maybe I'll make, we'll make you some sandwiches. But yes, I, I will eat the. Oh, you think we're friends? No, oh. not someone else. <laughs> Silly you. Yeah, I'll. I'll uh, I'm still going to eat that cheese, though. We can have sandwich lunches. Okay. Uh, so yeah, if you want to have a hot take to discuss at your office space, ask your neighbor, will you eat cheese with some fungus that was cut off or not but you're not eating the mold i just want to be clear at least you're not eating any detectable mold there you go <laughs> yes any uh, mold that you can see
So we'll find out. Next we time. won't. <laughs> <laughs> and I think we have time for one more segment. I think our guest still staying a little anxious over there. So yeah, he or she is fine. We'll hurry up. Yay! This Ooh, week is history. Wiki history. How fitting. Okay. This week in history. Oh my, there's a lot. No, I just formatted there's it. There's a lot, you guys. I'm looking at the notes. You better. Well, if someone would stop yapping, and I could get through it. In October 11th, back in 1968, oh NASA God. launched the Apollo 7, the first crewed Apollo mission that paved the way for the eventual moon landing uh, the year later, hmm. 1969. Then in October 12th, this is a good one, in 1492... Columbus held the ocean blue. That's right. That's who we are talking about. He reached nice. the New World. Um, do you know which country he landed in? He landed or he thought he landed in? Uh, he actually landed in, yes. Not what he thought. Which country? Yes. I don't think I don't want to embarrass myself. The Bahamas. <laughs> he landed in the Bahamas. Um, in nineteen twenty eight, on October twelfth, the iron lung respirator was used for the first time. Do you know where? And do you know on like what age group of person, right? I feel like to answer the question, I need to know what, what an iron lung respirator it, it, is. It has <laughs> like a I think it's a I think it's like an external lung that like <laughs> breathes for you. Oh. Since something very European? Yeah. No, it's oh, not. Okay, then I'm just going to leave it at that. <laughs> it was in Boston, and it was at a ch uh, children's hospital. Oh, wow. Yeah, 1928. Sounds like a lot to unpack, but we don't have time for that. We don't. In <laughs> On October 13th in 2016, good old Bob Dylan oh. was awarded a Nobel Prize in Literature um, for creating new poetic exp expressions within the great American song tradition. On October 14th in 1947, Chuck Yeager became the first person to break the sound barrier when he flew the experimental Bell X-1 rocket plane. <sighs> yeah, there it goes. Sound effect. Uh, in <laughs> October 15th, 1582, the Gregorian calendar was adopted by Italy, Poland, Portugal, and Spain. Do you know how many days they had to skip forward from the Julian calendar, which they were using previously? 42. No, mm. only 11, which is still a lot. I, that still blow, I know we've had a calendar question in the past. It still blows my mind that they're just like, today's October 4th, tomorrow's October 15th. <laughs> it's just a, a wild world to live in. Well, time is a construct. All, all those day. meetings that you would have missed because they skipped 11 days. Or the, no, that's a good thing. Mm? Okay. <laughs> and uh, October 16th, 1923, the Walt Disney Company was founded. Uh, I have my issues with them. It was founded by Walt Disney and... Don't you go there every year? Um, it was founded by <laughs> Walt Disney and Roy O. Disney. My question for you is, do you know who the heck Roy Disney is? He's the cousin who helped fund Pluto. No, he's the older <laughs> brother. Oh. I have never heard of Roy Disney. I've heard of Walt Disney. Oh, hopefully. that's yeah. You but, go there every year. But Roy Disney, I feel like there's some some things that we have to unpack there. There's but some, there's some you, cheese in there. There's some cheese and our last one here and this one's this one you'll love because i know you're such a beer drinker <laughs> on october 17th in 1814 we had the london beer flood where a giant vat at a brewery burst and flooded the streets with beer and actually caused a few deaths um do you know how many liters of beer were released and it's not 99 bottles thank you for the sound effect <laughs> I would say 87. One million <laughs> liters. <laughs> That's very funny. <laughs> That's a little delay there. <laughs> um, yeah, one million liters of beer That's flooded the streets. You would love that. You'd be swimming. Uh, of London, yeah. Swimming heaven. I mean, I probably would have jumped in it and like just like swam open mouth. You would drown. Although London back in 1814 was... I'm terribly dirty. I think so. London now might be questionable. Use the streets. I think, yeah, any street. Uh, but you actually missed something for this week in history. I did? In 1993, nope. October 22nd. That's next week. Coming up this weekend, it was our very own R&D engineer's birthday. Mm. Baby Aww. Baby Hagen baby was Hagen born. Baby Hagen was born. Uh, cue for sound effects that are, seem to be dormant. Hmm. Well, that's <laughs> there it is. Yeah. Uh, so happy early birthday. Well, thanks. We'll bring it up again next week. Great. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> well, that was this past week in history. Yeah. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. 
Ooh. I think we've wasted everyone's time long enough. I absolutely. Uh, and I think we're ready for a guest. Are you ready for a guest? I'm ready for our guest. Or well, as you put, our guest. Or this guest <laughs> is a walking sunflower. She Every time she walks into a room, she just radiates sunshine and joy. Uh, and whether you have a general question or need some great food recommendations, or you just need someone to talk to about the great people are of, oh, this guest is your gal. Mm. Uh, she's friendly than your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man, <laughs> but she's just as, Im as impactful in helping everyone she comes across with. Uh, she has a handful of years under her RO belt, and so she has seen a lot and definitely seen RO grow a couple of years and get it to where it's at today. Yeah. Um, surely she has seen a lot. Of, she has a lot of stories to tell us, and I can't wait to hear those. She does. Uh, then let's just dive a little deeper into this week's guest. Who is it? Let me introduce you to the one, the only, Marcy Galvan. You done Bible study? Take a little nap. Uh, Dr. Fritz is a really big advocate of the naps. You got to have a nap. Yeah. He was trying to get uh, submit an idea to the innovation station on getting uh, sleep pods yeah. installed in the office. I'm telling you. Nap I, it up. I, I read it. It replenishes hormones, which is kind of cool. Really? Yeah. That would kind of just make sense. You wake up, you're feeling good, alive. Yeah, you 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 slow down your age process, and it's kind of cool. Man, so, that's something we all want to do. I think. Slowly. Just anyway, yeah. Do you, do you take naps? You don't take naps? I try sometimes. Mm -hmm. I don't. I, I don't enough. I guess mm -hmm. it's hard for me to like just do 15, 20 minutes. Okay. Um, I'm like that's I good, either want to go to bed or yeah. I don't. <laughs> do truck don't truck drivers take like thirty minute naps? I think that's what that's where their thing is. I never I think, drove I truck, so. Marcy. I'm not. I'm sure. just saying. I think I, I learned that from somebody that's like <laughs> thirty minutes. That's what the naps they take. I said, okay, cool. That would kind of makes. I'm thinking like you know you, you get those highway somewhere. eyes yeah. whenever you're on a road trip or whatever you pull off, take yeah. a quick nap. Or eating water burger. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and those fries were so amazing. Anyway, we, oh, we we'll get to that later. I know. It's good. Marcy fun. Galvan. Yeah. Thank you so much for hanging out with us for a bit thank today. you for asking me this is fun I, w I didn't know what to expect i'm like me what do i bring to the table oh, i don't so I much don't i i think if we had to go poll ro and yeah. ask who brings the most to this company no it'd be not. like a fight between you and tamra love it you two are i love it you're the first one everyone sees yeah. when they come into the office whenever That's a fun. new hire comes in yeah. You're the face that greets them. Yeah. Whenever uh, you know you're heading out for the day, it's it's you all there at the desk saying, "Hey, have first a good one, weekend." First one there there. and last one out. So yeah. I, I, yeah, I don't know where we'd be without people like yourself and Tamara. And Tamara, we're gonna come for you one of these days. Tamara rocks. She's where's she, the camera? She's a killer. It's <laughs> Can you see that? I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay. Whatever oh, one no. is red is on. <laughs> I just saw that one. Sorry. Anyway. Cameras everywhere. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I think you you bring so much. That's why I'm so excited. I'm nervous. Why? Because everyone knows you. That's a scary part. That's it's like, like I saw, I saw her. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's it's a, it's a fun job for me. Um, for Tam, I, and I speak for all the receptionists everywhere in this admin, whatever you want to call them, because no matter what's going on in your life. You got to smile. You got to put that smile. Most people have offices or you go to your truck or you go to a cubicle, wherever. We can't hide. You're on it. We go exfoliate, cry, whatever. Life happens. I mean, it's just like everybody else, right? But we're women. We're emotional. And so if something's going on in our lives, we, we go at it and, and then come back and smile and hi. And pretend that I'm like you're the first time I've, even though you walked in that office so many times, I still see you and treat you like it's the first time me ever meeting you. Aww. And that, that's what I want you to feel. Not in a, not in a bad way, but in my, I'm excited. Kind of like a dog. <laughs> 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 no, not really. But, you know, I, I want to I wanna make sure that you, you, you're coming home. I mean, we work so many hours at work. Think about how many hours we put at work. And, and uh, I want you to feel like you're, you're hanging out with your family, you know? Uh, we have, I don't know if you've seen the back room, how many snacks we have. 
I did familiarize myself yeah. very well. Lots of snacks, lots of drinks and vitamin waters. We even had a smoothie. We have a smoothie bar. And because we spent so much time here, and I want everybody to feel at home. I don't want you to feel like you, you are coming to work, but it's, it's more of a relaxed environment. I want you to, you know, just relax, calm down, but kick butt, you know, at your work. And so that's what I want, sorry. That's what I want people to, to feel when they walk in. And, and I tell that to every single young person that comes in to RO, besides me telling them, we are a family. You mess with one, you mess with all, starting with me. <laughs> like, yes, ma'am. But um, this is my family, and this is my second home, and I don't, I love everybody. Oh, so, yeah. well, it's it's mutual. Everywhere you go, if you bring up Ms. Marcy Galvan, Aww. no one has. Short now, because I got. You're short, I'm sorry. Yeah, yes. no, that's okay, that's okay. Was it I been about it. a year now? Just no, about. this is five months ago. Five months? Wow. Yeah. If that's it? Oh, my gosh. So much fun flies by for those that aren't familiar with you maybe some new people down in houston san antonio austin yeah. whatever what is your current role here i am an admin assistant and emma wants to change my title to first impression something something i'm like <laughs> leave it to marketing to find like to find the, something the I most know. royal title for yeah. for all of us but can i say i think if you don't need a title if you love what you do i don't need a title I, I, I take care of my people. My job is to take care of people. I love serving people. If I could spend the rest of my life doing something that I love is serving coffee. I love serving coffee. Don't laugh. <laughs> I love serving coffee. Yes. But don't make it like, you know, cappuccino, blah, blah, blah. Just decaf or caffeine. Which one do you want? The orange or the, or the black? <laughs> I love serving Keep coffee. Keep it easy. Yeah. So I do. I, do, I enjoy it. That's, I think there's a lot of people out there, too, that kind of get that wrong to some degree there's that mentality maybe even pressure by mm -hmm. peers family friends whatever yeah. that like oh you have to have a title you need to be a director you need to be yeah. a president or something yeah. like that and people get in such a rush to get some title yeah that they don't take the time to to get to know the people and the process yeah. and really yeah the relationship yeah, yeah. uh I, how how have you managed to to capture that and maintain that uh, throughout your career here? Humanity. Can I say that? It's yeah. We're all the same. We all we all bleed the same. This heart's gonna stop one of these days. Either you spend eternity somewhere, right? I treat the cleaning crew not any not that they're any different just like Justin, is that respect of humankind. I think if you, sometimes people get titles behind their names and their head just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, and we need to be respectful to one another, love one another, you know, treat each other. And they say, well, treat people the way you like to be treated. You know what, I have a thicker skin than people, some other people do, right? But most of us have kids, right? They're gonna treat your kid that way. Life and the world is very short. They can come around and kick you on the butt with your Real kids. Real quick. So for me, we're no different. I mean, if you were to throw a Hyundai, a little car, and a Ferrari off the cliff, I think they're both going to get... <laughs> Gravity impacts each of them. Exactly. <laughs> Same thing with humans. I mean, we're all here oh, wow. to work together and, and, and take this company to the next level. So how beautiful it is to, to encourage one another, you know? One of the Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 15, hopefully I'm not doing this wrong, or saying it wrong, but it, it, it talks about the tongue, how you can, you can crush somebody's spirit with the tongue, or you can uplift them. And so, how beautiful it is for you to encourage somebody who maybe just had a bad day, you have no idea. I mean, I, I go to restaurants and I, I get the worst service ever. And I cannot say, well, she's not getting a tip. You have no idea what she's going on at home. So it, I still give her that tip because we're human and life happens. And um, it's good to, to, to do that for people, you know, and, and a, kind of smile, a kind smile can lighten up somebody's day. A hug, say something kind to people, you know, find something good about that person. We're here to teach each other. We're not here to rip each other down. We have new people coming into the company that it, we have, they have no idea how we work, right? 
Sometimes so, a couple of new ones each week. <laughs> yeah, and it's crazy how fast we're growing. But, you know, um, teach them. Teach them how, who we are. Um, don't, what's the word, scold? Scold them, right? Teach them. We're here to teach the, the, the young generation what's going to happen when you retire from, from Rogers O'Brien. You want to make sure that somebody's got your back and that you have trained them well to do your job. Same thing with me. You know, I'm planning to retire from, from RO. When that time happens, I'm not going to just let anybody come in. I got to make sure that you got that personal ed to love my people because you can't train people. You're born with that gift. You can train someone to do this equipment, but to have people's skills, that's something you're born with. And I think it's important in our company to promote those people. People, people, people. Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> to promote people that are good with people yeah. um, because that's something you can't, you can't train anybody. That's, I think Miranda down in Austin quotes you on that quite quite yeah. often. Pe- people, 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 people. Like you, you, you have to I mean? be able to yeah. get along. And uh, I think the beauty of that, and I, I love everything you said because it makes me feel very at home and welcome. Not I, I try to extend that to yeah. new hires. Like, well, I guess he's not that new anymore. But you know, people <laughs> like Doctor Fritz whenever he comes on board yeah. and all that. Yeah. Like, I, I want them to feel the same way around me that I feel whenever I walk into the Dallas office and see you. And that isn't something that costs you anything. Paying someone a compliment, being courteous, kind. Uh, I could not agree more with you on the, uh, yeah, you know, the the golden rule, rule, treat people how you want to be treated. No, treat people how they want to be treated. Yeah, yeah. Um, Because it's not going to be the same for everybody. So, and. That's one of the, again, one of those things. It doesn't take anything but a bit of effort to yeah. just be, to extend to them what they would like. Yeah. And it's not necessarily a service of telling people what they want to hear, but just thinking about if I tell somebody this, does this make their life better? I guess yeah. no, there's no reason to be intentionally hurtful if it doesn't benefit right. somebody. Right. And that seems like something that a lot of people just totally miss on. They'd yeah. rather go say, well, I'm just going to be 100% honest with everyone all the time. That's not always the best policy. No. It's an easy policy, yeah. Yeah. but it doesn't always yeah. pan out as well as you think it will. Yeah. No, just be kind to one another. Be kind and, 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 and uh, serve one another. There's nothing wrong with serving. I mean, uh, you can be in the office and I, I can say, hey, would you like a cup of coffee? And you would say, I have to say, yes, I do. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I enjoy it. It's all about a relationship. And it's something, I, I call it a crockpot relationship. You know, people want microwave relationships. It's not going to work. I'm a baker. I'm a baker. So you bake a, a cake at 335 for about an hour and 15 minutes. Well, I need to take these notes down. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, and some people want to bake a cake at 400 for 15 minutes. It might look pretty from the outside, but once you cut it, that goo's going to come out. So relationships are, are very, very important to me. And it don't make enemies. Make make friends you know at the end of the, at the end of your life you're going to see how many people you actually um impacted and you'll know at that funeral service well, it's, it's it's funny you say that not yeah. the funeral service yeah. but about the baking the cakes i remember yeah. uh, getting into construct something? what Did you bake something no no oh. no you don't want me doing that uh i remember hearing a joke whenever i first got instruction it was like you know what a project manager is right yeah it's someone who thinks that three women can have one baby in three months. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a hard, it's a hard job. It really is. Both Baker and the PM. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, they, they, they both get up early. Both early in the morning. Yeah. Have to deal with people. Mm-hmm. Be, be people, people, be people, be, be people, people, people. But how did you get your start at RO? What brought you in Ooh, here? Let's see. That was back in 19... 19- 93. Yeah, I was 23 years old. I was 23 years old, single mom, with my son, who was now 33, 32. Um, And so I had left Sam's, um, what is that, Sam's membership? uh, Sam's Club. Sam's Club Club in El Paso. I was a cashier and a a cart pusher, you know, those flatbeds. I was the only girl. That was the toughest job I've ever had in my life. In El Paso, life. too. Yeah. It is brutal out yeah. there. And so the, the parking lot goes like this. Oh, my goodness. So I had to get all the carts coming up. Anyway, so I left from there, came here, didn't have a job, and I ended up going to a temp, temp agency. And uh, I did little jobs here and there. And um, I was hired to work at RO 
at a job site. It was when we were building, I think it's the Demos 2, I believe. Anyway, it's at uh, Texas Instruments. And so I was there, I'm going to say about four months or so. And I fell in love with all my guys. I work with Steve Hesnell, Preston Atchison. Um, it was Chris Britt was out there. Britt Harris was out there. All my guys. It's just it was an awesome relationship. And so they started interviewing for somebody in accounting. And it was the PM, which was Terry Morris at the time. And um, so I had to prep them up for the interview. And every time he interviewed somebody. They would just leave. And he's like, I just can't find anybody. This one doesn't want any smoking around. This one doesn't want to come at a certain time. This one doesn't like foul mouth. I mean, it was just like, do, 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 do. I said, it's a job site. What do you expect, right? So I said, well, maybe the next time, maybe the next person. And he came up to me and says, how would you like the job? And I'm like, what? And and Rick Spiegel was there as well. And I was so excited. That, yes, I'll take, I'll take the job. I was oh so excited. Gosh. Single mom, you know, and... Um, I told Rick Spiegel, and, and he's, he called me Diva. He still calls me Diva. <laughs> and he says, Diva, you have a great team. You have Shirley and Seal who can teach you accounting. I, I don't know anything about accounting. I know Tanky. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so I, I was there. so excited. Three days later, uh, you know, you've been to a job site. We have all kinds of trailers and stuff. Oh, yeah. I see this really tall, slim man come in with these hard hats sideways and a toothpick in his mouth. And he said, hello, hi, are you lost? Because I can, I can show you where to go, the trailers. I said, no, my name is Pat O'Brien and I'm, I'm here to con congratulate you. I'm like, oh my gosh. Like he what? drove all the way to congratulate me and to welcome me aboard. Oh my and goodness. And I will never forget that. It was so awesome for him to just walk in. Oh, thank you so much. I, I will do the best the best job that I can and yeah I was there for almost 10 years and then left because I had my little girl which she's 27 now um I was gone for 10 years and then I'm back and I've been here 10 years now so close to total 20 years almost wow and so Justin I think I met Justin when he was 16 and I Barely came back driving. and I'm like what are you doing here I said I'm taking over I loved it so Seal's been here forever um, yeah, so I, I've, I've known people that are in this company for a long time. Leon, Carrie, all of them. You know, this is my family. So to come back in, in my core, of course. Um, but that's that's how I came in. I was that's working incredible. for the Tim agency and, and uh, yeah, stayed here. I won't work anywhere else. That's it's so wild just yeah. uh, to to think of that as the, the yeah. genesis. And we've heard that from other people as well. Yeah. Uh, Kate Lynn down in Austin, yeah. she came through as a, a temp agency. Yeah. I think she was in... Um, Accounting. Was oh, it accounting? accounting? I think she was somewhere. Here in accounting, but I don't know what she was doing before. I think I thought it was something else. I can't recall now. Okay. I'm sorry, Kate. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I came in through a, a temp yeah. agency and all that. Well, I guess it wasn't here. It was uh, somewhere else. And then someone came to RO and brought yeah. her in, in yeah. tow, if I recall correctly. Yeah. So this was my second my second round. Um, the other one, it's another story, but I'll maybe in the next interview. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> if I ever get another one. Oh, I think, yeah. yes. I, I think we'll definitely have to do. Thank you. I'm gonna forecast that already. We've we've barely started here. I'm already you're just feeling scratching like, the surface, baby. Like <laughs> one question, and there's no way we're getting through all these. Got it. What does your typical day look like? I, I'm, I you said you come in, do Bible study, nap, mm. workout. Yeah. But so once you kind of be on my schedule in the morning, like yeah, what? what oh, I, I, I feel like so. it's probably a lot of people that don't. You know, they swing into the office yeah. once a month or whatever that don't really know what's going on in Marcy's world. So Marcy's world, Marcy's world is difficult because I'm hard on myself. Um, let's see, alarm goes off at 4.15. I get up at 4.30. Early bird. Mm -hmm. I married a man that loves loves early bird like, like myself. So we get up, go to the gym, come back, pack our breakfast, and then head to work. I get here. Um, we have this gym. I'm literally from here to my truck, another gym, and then... IOS, IOS, whatever, where my husband goes. So we'll go work out, and um, then I'll do my Bible study about 7.30. And then from 7.30 to 8, I get up and do my work. And here I go. I start. I don't do my real work until maybe 3 o'clock, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, because all day I'm serving. I'm opening the door for FedEx, UPS, packages, 
Jimmy John's catering, dash door, you name it. I think, I don't know how many steps I put a day. Just back and <laughs> forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And so, but every day is different. You know, I get to meet new people every day. Um, I've made so many friendships that I still stay in touch. Vendors that came in for catering, I still stay in touch and have coffee with. Um, people that I left the company three or four or five years ago, I still t stay in touch with them. I want to make sure everything's doing okay. Yeah, there's still uh, there's still people. You know what I mean? They, yeah. You never know when someone's gonna say, "Hey, I'm looking to uh, get back in the Coming game back. here." Yeah. And we've got yeah. more than a couple of those too, mm -hmm. and ops and support departments, people yeah. who, myself, disappeared for <laughs> not oh. years, but yeah. for uh, you know a couple of months, and it's like, hey, came back. ready to come back? <laughs> I love <laughs> still it. Still want me? It's a great. It's a great <laughs> company. I think one thing about RO, it's they always welcome you back with open arms. You know, and then they were like, mm, why did you leave? Blah, blah, blah. Not at all. It's yeah. like, hey, you're back. This is awesome. I love uh, it. It's, uh, uh, I see it as a great compliment to be paid when if, if someone, yeah, I think of the interns a lot too, right? Where yeah. they intern with RO and then maybe they go and intern with another GC for a summer. Mm -hmm. And then they come back and say, you know what? I think if I'm going for a full-time gig, I'd, yeah. I'd like to talk to you all about it more than those other guys. I love it. Because uh, yeah. they... They, they, they had the taste and went out there, looked around, and even after peeking about, said, yeah, that RO place is pretty pretty, awesome. pretty, pretty good. We're pretty yeah. awesome. <laughs> We're pretty awesome. What's yes. something that people would be surprised to learn about you, Marcy? I think everybody pretty much knows me. Um, I don't I know. Imagine I imagine something. Like, um, a, uh, a strange, a strange food, a um, favorite food or something like that, or... I don't, I don't like, oh, this is so weird. I don't like eating eggs outside. Hold on. That, <laughs> it's, you, it's the, it's the taste of, <laughs> how do I explain this? Cause I married my husband and he was looked at me like, what? He gave me that Forrest Gump head tip. Yeah. <laughs> so have you ever smelt a wet dog in oh, the yeah. summer? Yeah. That's I've got two dogs at home. Okay, I, that's what egg tastes to me outside. You ever you say outside, like out of doors? Like if, like in, if you and I were having breakfast right now and we have a brunch and all this stuff, sorry, um, and the doors were open, I could smell the egg. And I'm like, there's a door or a window open here. I need you to find it before I put that egg in my mouth because it <laughs> grosses me out. And my kids thought I was weird. I go, Mom, stop. <laughs> and now my kids are the same way. Sorry. That's so interesting. I've never heard of that. Yeah, it's just gross. Can't eat eggs outside. So And I'm a no, kind of a germaphobe too. I just a bit of a germaphobe. That's yeah. I feel like that's not necessarily a, a bad or th strange yeah. thing nowadays. Okay. So I used when I go to the Rangers, I I take my towel to sit on. I, and then I just, like on the and then seat. I disinfect the the Oh, arm that's, that's pretty just, intense. Yeah, that's that's, that's just, a little more than I thought. That's just <laughs> It's just gross. It is. I mean, if I go to a restaurant with shorts. I won't do it. I would, really? I mean, mm -mm. No, I have no idea whose hairy, unstuffed cuts, whatever, <laughs> sweat, bumps, rash, <laughs> was sitting on that wood. Whatever it is, I'm not sitting on that. So if it's 150 degrees outside and we're sitting outside in bed, I will take my towel, or I'll be wearing jeans. You know, oh my you gosh! You see me in shorts. Good to know. I'll make sure that I'm always, <laughs> always as clean as I can be whenever I approach Marcy. Pretty gross. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh no. That's so that's all it. Good. I think I, I think that's I think that's it. The, the egg one's interesting. That's up there with Emma and her. Um, was it the f fear of chewing gum? Right. Yeah. She, she, she's afraid of chewing gum. Why? Yeah. I'm gonna uh, offer some gum next time oh, I see her. I, don't mention me if you do. Hubba bubba. <laughs> <laughs> Giving you my age. Oh, that's yeah. funny. Yeah, yeah. I w if I you could re like record that for me, I uh, I'd love to have that. What, is it the, the egg thing? No, no. Uh, giving Emma some some hubba bubba. You better Just believe to... it. You seen the packages that look like tobacco? But they're actually yeah, gum? yeah. I remember those when I was a kid. Those are best. <laughs> Where they're so sugary. It's just like sugar coated. It's just so gum. disgusting now. If you think of all the stuff we used to eat as kids. It's shocking that I'm, I'm still here. Surprised that we're not like a bunch of diabetics walking around. Yeah. You have what sugar? You have whole milk. You had frosted flakes with an or and then orange juice and then and then that bread was for breakfast. with like a pound of butter 
was the <laughs> breakfast of the champions, which is crazy now, but yeah, no, that was gross. I give up milk, so I don't drink milk anymore. Really? Yeah. Why? Just the uh, dietary reasons and all that? Yes and no. I just hurt what was in it. That's why it's so white. <laughs> And I won't tell you why. So I was gonna say I don't I'm know if I want to know. I, no, you don't want to know. I enjoy some granola and milk in the morning, yeah. so I'll, I'll just be blissfully just ignorant for now. <laughs> Make me pivot to yeah. nothing but yogurt and granola. And that, goat, I'm trying to get into goat milk, which I yeah. don't drink milk, um, or goat yogurt. And I just I'm like, because it's supposed to be the, the best. Like fermented foods are supposed to be really good for you, and that's what I got into. Huh. Um, so yeah. I I never, yeah, I guess goat cheese I'm familiar with, and goat milk I'd heard goat about, but I never thought about goat milk yogurt. And yogurt, yeah. Yeah. I bought one today, but they didn't have any. Well, I was DoorDash it, but they didn't okay. have any. So anyway, so yeah. Anyway, what's been your most memorable experience here at Aro? At Aro? Yeah. Oh, way too many. Um, oh, you got to pick one. We need, we need to highlight the the top the, tier the top, moment. The top one. V1. I'm gonna say, this is back in 1995, 95, 96, somewhere in there. It was when we were, RO was at in the Morrison 11145 Morrison Lane before we moved here. Okay. Um, Steve Rogers and Pat O'Brien, they were still at the office. And every year, the guys took a fishing trip camp. Only the guys, no women. Okay, only the guys. So I went up to Pat, to Pat O'Brien. I said, hey, do you mind if I play a trick on the guys? And it was Luke Honder. Luke Honder, uh, Preston Atchison, they were all in charge of this, of this camping trip. And he looked at me and said, what are you going to do? I said, just, are you with me? Said, I'm with you. I said, okay, thank you. <laughs> so then I got with Seal. This is before email, okay? So I had to go verbally tell the ladies what we were doing. Seal, Laura, um, who else? Shirley. Fran was there with us, and I said, hey, guys, we're going to come in tomorrow. We're going to have rollers on. We're going to have our, our um, flower beds, whatever you call it, blankets, and our bags, and we are going to meet the guys in the parking lot because <laughs> this, is, this is, has to be a classic. So all the guys, they show up in their trucks. And they have a clipboard, and who's doing what, who's bringing what. And here we come. And I'm pregnant, by the way. No. <laughs> <laughs> I am, I think, I don't know, seven months pregnant. This is with your daughter, I'm guessing. Yeah. And, and Seal's coming with rollers on her hair. She's got a huge <laughs> blanket with roses on it. <laughs> Fran comes up with roses, I mean, uh, hair rollers and all kinds of stuff. You should have seen these guys like, what's, where, what's where, where are they going? I was, We're going with you. You guys have AC, right? <laughs> you have AC, you have nice, comfortable areas. No, we wouldn't. Well, we're going with you guys. Some of those guys were angry. Really? They were so angry because, you know, we were they coming along. I thought it was, was the boys' weekend. It was supposed to be a guy thing. And I'm like, hey, I know how to cook. Calm down. I'll make you some enchiladas in the morning and some good <laughs> coffee. I got your back. So we climbed in one of the cars. You, we were, you, were com oh, you guys were committed. Yeah, we were you were in. So the guy, Jim Hemsworth, he used to be with, with us. He was the marketing, one of the marketing directors. And uh, he was laughing because he was, he was in it as well. Of course, we get in, the, in his vehicle and we're waving bye to the guys. And I'm like, you guys drive carefully. Don't drive too fast. I'll see you guys there about <laughs> two hours. And Jim is just laughing. He's like, oh, my goodness, Marcy. Of course, he made a U-turn and we came back. And Pat O'Brien is like, why? What? Why did I? Like, Stir the pot. Keep people on their toes a bit here. Have a little bit of fun. <laughs> it was fun. So that was that was. Crazy. That's fantastic. Yeah, oh, I'm so awesome. happy I got to hear that. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. So Seal was in it too. So she, she's on. We need to get you need, her. You need to get her. We need to get her. Absolutely. She's awesome. That's, she's awesome. It, it was much debate of my. That's incredible. Longer she's than anyone else here. She's got stories to tell you. Oh, I, I can only imagine. Mine are like a grain of salt compared to hers, I'm sure. <laughs> but yeah, I've seen people come and go. And, uh, but the great thing about it is that I love seeing them come back. Like Tim Storms left. I'm making a bet one time he, when he's coming back. I'll give him two years. <laughs> Tim, you're coming back. 
You know who Tim Storms is? I'm not Tim Storms is a project manager. He had been here forever since I was here, and he left. Um, and he was he was in charge of the um, legacy, all the legacy. Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 Yep. Um, and so, yeah, I'm I'm putting a bet in two years to be back. Yep. We'll see. We'll see. We got to write down the year. I, I think if if anyone's going to get that bet right, it's going to be Marcy. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> Never won anything in my life. That's yeah. why I tell my well, I told my husband. You know, um, when we go out, they see us. Oh, that's an idea. He lost the bet. <laughs> he, he had to marry me. Sorry, honey. You're stuck with me for life. So anyway, he's a good man. Though. I don't think you lost out on anything, he's, Marcy. He's a good man. Let's see. You're, you're an incredible woman. He's very lucky to Thank have you, you in his life. So Thank you. I'm super happy for both of you. I remember being so stoked whenever I, I heard you're getting married yeah, and all that. And yeah. I thought I'd be single for the rest of my life. That's the, one of the nicest compliments I got when I got dumped one time. is like, your morals and your standards are too high. Thank you for that. Let me, that. Yeah. let me toast to that. <laughs> <Jerk>. <laughs> but I thank him. I thank him every day. Thank you, Lord. Because I got an amazing man now. It, it all yes. falls into place. Yes. It's incredible. Yes, it uh, is. Just the, the tiniest of events can change yeah. how the next 20, 30, 40 yeah. plus years of your yeah. life go. Yeah. And it's... Uh, it goes by quick. Boy, does it ever. Um, yeah. If you could have coffee with anyone, a deceased living, forgo any language barrier. Yeah. If you could have coffee with anyone, who would you want to sit down and have oh, coffee with? That's going to hold And I'll serve you guys, whoever it may be. I uh, know. It, it would have to be Martin Luther. I don't know if you know who he is. Uh, German Martin Luther, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Reformer. Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Him. Wow. See, that's what I hadn't even yeah. considered. What, why, why Martin Luther? He stood his ground to the truth, um, even though there were so many people being persecuted for the truth. And he stood his ground. And I, and I love that about him. And, and I, get, I get it. I didn't understand it. So I'm going to just decline the faith. You're fine. It's like, no. Right? Because one of these days I'm going to... I'm going to stand in the face between, you know, in the face of God, and I'm, I'm going to have to tell him why, why I did, why I didn't, right? Um, so that'll be the man. He's got so nailing those 95 pieces yes. on that door. That is, wow. that is one of those, um, you know, I, I think most of us are, are lucky to be remembered two generations after yeah. we pass. Yeah. Uh, not a, a bad thing. It's just that the world keeps going even mm -hmm. after we're gone. Yeah. And whenever you think of someone like, Martin Luther, that has had such a tremendous impact and is still remembered today. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I can think of a few others. I don't know, John Hancock, right? Of yeah. someone who did something that people still remember to this day. Martin Luther was 300 years prior yeah. to John Hancock. So yeah. he's Charles well, Spurgeon. He's one of them as yeah. well. I mean, these people, I, I, I love their fire for the faith. Um, didn't budge. And I'm like, no, I'm doing it. I'm, I'm the same way. I mean, I... I can go on and on, but I won't. <laughs> I, I think the Lord tested me yesterday. I was at Albertsons, and I'm sitting there. We have a group of people in the um, in our church that um, we watch over or check on. And so I was checking on a lady, and as I'm talking to her, somebody goes, wham, hits my truck on the side. Oh, no. Hang on a second. I rolled down my window, and it's this lady. I said, did you save my truck? Yes. And I'm like, how was the damn, I, I couldn't get out. I'm, Pinned in at that point. And she looked at me, she said, what are you going to do about it? You're kidding me. And I just sat there. Again, the old Marcy <laughs> wants to get out. <laughs> but I have someone that I'm ministering to and I can't. I can't. And so I said, I just asked you a question. You didn't have to be rude about it. So what are you going to do about it? And I rolled down my window as quick as I could because I can't. The old me is gone. And so I just got on the phone and I kept talking to her. So tell me what your needs are. Da, da, da. And I hung up and then I turned my engine on and I left to another location so I can cool off and I start praying. Oh. And then I went home. Bless your heart. <laughs> I, I don't know. Um, it's... <laughs> We're living in a in a world that doesn't respect first humanity, second property, you know, and just mm. 
and it's just sad. It's really, really sad because I'm like, the, what is there's a sticker that says, the the more and the more I know people, the more I love my pets. What is it? Oh, I think it's something along those lines. Something I know like what you're talking yeah, yeah, about. Yeah. yeah. So anyway, so I went home and I told my husband, and he was so gracious. He's like, hey, we're living in a dark world, so don't worry about it. Just what, you were okay. I said, yeah, because these days, what can they do? They they can pull out a gun, right? And I'm like, I'm like it's just. And, and it wasn't a big damage, it was like on the on the side of my, um, the door handle. But her comment, what do you do about it? I can do something about it. <laughs> I can't if don't I really want Don't make me get out of the car. But I'm just saying, I mean, because I, I, I carry, I don't, I don't carry carry, but there's something here that I can, I'm good with an axe. <laughs> Let me just put it to you that way. I'm an axe thrower. Not too many people know that. And I could just easily just, but I can wrap this hey, up I'll right be, now. I'll, you'd be sending letters to prison. <laughs> 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 to, Sweet Marcy, what happened? Uh, I'd be visiting, yeah. She uh, became, go, she became Mel Gibson in one second. <laughs> so anyway, but no, but I, I, you have to, you have to just um, find another place to decompress. And, and even the job sites, you know, I know people get, Angry and irritated, irritated. How do you say? It? Uh, Irrit irritable? Irritated, irritated. irritated. Yeah. yeah. With people, and I'm like, learn, learn how to pull back before you do something that you might regret for the rest of your life. Even saying something bad. Um, so I, my ex-husband was a personal trainer, and so I taught the kids to get the anger out of punish them is by doing push-ups or sit-ups. <laughs> so I try to do sit-ups when I'm upset. Very rare, go. though. I I try not to. I think the older I get. I don't get as upset as I used to. I'm like, I don't have time for that. You realize that whenever you get angry with somebody or frustrated with someone, someone cuts you off in traffic or whatever, yeah. and you get angry at them, like you, you're giving them space in your life. Mm -hmm. You're dedicating yeah. Yeah. brain power and emotions to someone who probably, Getting more likely than not, didn't even, they just didn't realize you were there. Yeah. That's yeah. all it was. I'm sure there's, I yeah. know there's people out there that will intentionally cut people off, but. Yeah. Most of the time, I think it's someone who just uh, Being blind in a hurry. spot, yeah. in, a oh, in a hurry. You know, my daughter was with me when she lived with me, and she's like, Mom, how come you don't use your horn? I said, you know, I'm going to use the horn when, when you're about to hit me versus you could have hit me. Major difference on that. I can count on this hand how many times I've honked my horn. I've had that truck for about 10 years. <laughs> I just don't do it. You know, if people want to cut me off in the highway, go for it. Maybe he forgot his tobacco. Maybe he's got to go to the restroom. Maybe he has to go pick up his children from, and he knows he's going to get it from his wife. I don't know. But I don't care. Knock yourself out. As a New Yorker, I once blew the fuse on my truck honking my horn too much you driving did not. home. Just stop it. Yeah, just I'm sorry. Stop it's it. in our nature. It's a means yeah. of communication. That's all. It's like another language. That's, yeah. just, I've gotten better. But I love the fact how you can hear people. <laughs> Arguing with their horn? Yes. Bam, bam, bam. <laughs> bam. Like, really? What does that mean? And then they're talking back and forth with the horn. What is what is that? Uh, get out. Do something. You anyway, know, I just like it's so uh, silly. You get a feel for it after a while. Enough of it. You're kind of like, okay, it's like Morse, yeah. like Morse code. With yeah, the horn. a little bit. A little bit. Is there a class for that? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Living in Manhattan take for it. a couple of years. You should yeah. take it. What, is, what does that mean? Oh, wait, 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 wait. Oh. Oh, oh anyway, goodness. That's funny. funny. Yeah. I love it. Oh, that's, I haven't laughed that hard in a minute. I'm having fun, Marcy. Good. Um, what, going back to your, your, your job, yep. what is like the most challenging thing for you? What's a, like a very difficult, challenging thing for you to deal with? And that role is kind of being the, the face of RO, if you will. Yeah. When people don't listen. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, for me is, um, oh, I just say difficult. I like making people happy. And when you have different ages, different cultures, different ideas, different blah, 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 blah. It's hard. So I, I have to, I, I have to crack the whip when I don't want to. Mm. Um, yeah. I mean, I have, I, I get, I work with people who, um, I love you all. I do. <laughs> but sometimes you act like toddlers. <sighs> and so I have to pick up 
after them constantly I, because I feel like um, we do have people that come in our office, owners, architects, and and I I have to make sure that we have a good impression with the people that come in the office. So I constantly have to pick up after people, close cabinet doors, mm. again, and, and put a smile when things are not going well. Um, but other than that, I don't, I don't have a lot of difficult days. Can I tell you that? That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to hear that. I think, I think like, like I said, the older I'm getting, the more I'm like, eh. Mm, yeah. Mm, Just... Whatever. I mean, I, I, I refuse to have a, a bad day. I refuse it. There's, I don't. I don't want. If I die, I want to die with a smile. Yeah, there, there's not enough of them to spend <laughs> one to, to spend them frustrated or angry or uh, worth it. enraged about. Not worth it. Something. Not worth it. Yeah, that's not. Yeah. What's your most favorite part of your job? Is oh. there like one particular aspect of it you get totally fired up about and can't get enough of? Meeting, 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 and learning something new. Meeting somebody new mm-hmm. and learning something new. That's that's my, my every day. I wake up every every day. Okay, Lord, what what can I do for you today? I'm I'm ready to serve you. What can I what can I learn? And it was cool. I got to talk to somebody um, in an Uber yesterday and I, I became friends with her. So we exchanged phone numbers. <laughs> It was kind of cool. So that's wild. Yeah, I, just, I like meeting new people. Just like I said, I come into RO, come into work. It's coming to this huge mansion with people order Jimmy John's coffee and then pick up your Amazon crap. <laughs> you have five days. They know that. You have five days to pick something from the lobby that is yours. If not, it goes to the dumpster. Ooh, that yeah. is. Brutal. I love it though. Is that yeah? Yeah. And then the and then I clean up the refrigerator. Every Friday they get a little announcement. Hey, Friday fridge, five fifty four. Take grandma's Tupperware. If not, it's going. I can clean up that refrigerator in three seconds. <laughs> Bam, and then it goes in the dumpster, and I get to go home. Yeah. But um, you know, I've been told we, we need a we need a Marcy here. We need we need you here. Um, I love it. Keep I like all the ducks I love in a row. I like being difficult with love if that makes difficult sense. Difficult with difficult. Well, why would you love. call that love? Love stern love. I, I like that being difficult yeah. with love, lovingly difficult, Loving, lovingly stubborn. Lovingly, not stubborn, but love. Uh, lovingly and forceful. Um, I wanted to sound prettier. Yeah, yeah, I do too. I'm like a rose with thorns. Ooh. Is that okay? Ooh, that, can I, I think say that's that? fantastic. Yes, you can see. Say How do you turn you it? Do you turn the rose? I, I want to be um, thorns and then something kind or turn it up and then thorns and then get to the rose. I don't know which one. Turn it upside down. I don't know. They, they all know I love them. The, Every, even you, Graham. <laughs> The fact got, that we picked on him in guys, particular makes me really you happy. You love the unlovable. <laughs> no, but Graham, Graham, he's awesome. Anyway, no, I just, I love everybody. I don't. He don't is. I love I toddlers have. too. Uh, he what? I love toddlers too. They're great. I'm telling you, especially that one with gray hair. <laughs> Maybe it's a wig. No. Oh, anyway, goodness. but no, I, I, I love my job. I don't think there's one day out of the ten years that I have not said to myself, oh, I got to go to work. Mm. Not once. Not one. That's a beautiful thing and Not something one. that so few people get to experience. Yeah. Um, was, there... There's a saying, what is it? What is the saying that if you love your job, no, one day you have not gone to work. What is it? Uh, if if you do something you love, you'll never work a day a in day your life. In life. Yeah. yeah. That's me. Yeah. I told Mike Gore that one time he was leaving. I said, "Hey, hey, boss," because he's the boss man. Yeah. Thank you for my job. Because I started the second time I came, I was the executive, and and that's where I started. That's another story, but. Um, <laughs> We switched, and, and I loved my job because as an executive, not that it, there's nothing wrong with executives. I Go for it. I, I like having a window. I like talking to people. I like serving different people. I like back and forth, back and forth. Remember when the Fitbit first came, came out? Yeah. I was getting about 15,000, 20,000 steps a day. And they're like, how do you get that many steps of you being a receptionist and answering the phones? You put it on your dog. Oh, my dog's blind. What are you talking about? <laughs> Um, because I'm, I'm back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, making sure that everybody's taken care of. And so when I told that to Mike, but Mike, I can't believe I get paid for this job. 
And he said, well, we don't have to pay you. No, I got bills to pay. I need my check to come in. Yes. Unfortunately, <laughs> but, I can't convince, yeah. you know, the electric co-op and the bank with my mortgage yeah, that not gonna I love my job, so I but, shouldn't pay. But yeah. but no, I love it. I, I love my job. Uh, yeah. It's funny. These guys give me a hard time in Austin because that, that, they, they say that's all I say. That's, what? That you love your job? I, I do. I love my job. It's awesome. It's Especially nothing. when you work with people that are easy. Most yeah. people are easy. You know, and you have those that, hey, hey, hey. Calm down. Sit, sit down before you have a heart attack. Just sit down. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We'll figure it out. Don't, get, don't get sweat it. Back and relax. There yeah. you go. Yeah. You got time for a couple more here, Marcy? Yeah. Uh, favorite travel destination? <gasps> oh. There's so many. I know. I was gonna say. I know you've got some I'm options a, to I'm pick from I'm a country girl. I love the mountains. Okay. Alps. The Alps. Ooh. Um, I love the mountains. If yeah. I could, if I could retire, it would be somewhere. I don't know, Kentucky area, maybe. Oh, I don't know. Kind of Appalachia. I, I, yeah, I mean, I just um, my dream house. You ready? Okay. Yes, ma'am. Here we go. Here we go. We'll get an architect on immediately. My my dream dream home, besides the dream that I want to have now. But anyway, <laughs> it'd be one bedroom cabin. Okay. With a pot belly stove. Okay. A small table, uh, stacks of books, a little bed, outside, a rocking chair, my guitar, my shotgun, <laughs> my axe, my fishing pole, and my dog named Mr. Bates, near a river. Sign me up. I, That's what else do you need? That's it. Oh, and a cast iron because I need to cook. Well, <laughs> That's it. Or you just yeah. throw stuff on top of the pot belly, just you know? Pot belly. Just lay, you. lay that fish across that stove for it's about 10 minutes. You'll, you'll be all right. Yeah. I don't know how it's going to work out with the germophobia, but <laughs> it's your germs, can, right? It's my dream. I can yeah. do whatever I want to. <laughs> but outside the States, I would have to say um, Israel. Um, you say Israel? Israel, yeah. Yeah. Um, Germany will be in another place just because of Luther as well. Um, I, I love old architecture. Okay. Um, people ask me, what do I, I don't have any hobbies. I have, I guess if you want to call it a hobby, I like to travel all over the state of Texas and look for the old courthouses, um, and look at the architecture. The first, the first arch, the first how the first courthouse that was built here is in, um, I just went blank. Um. Uh, so it's, it's close to Jefferson. Anyway, I went there, and it was such a neat, neat courthouse. I'm like, this is the first courthouse that was built in Texas, you know? It's a crazy thing to think about. Yeah, like and, and so they were going to tear it down, but the guy from the Eagles, no what's way. his name? Uh, uh, come on, come on, come on. He's, oh. he's solo, uh, dirt laundry, dirty laundry dude guy. Oh, you know? what? <laughs> he's, he, he sings a song about dirty laundry. Anyway. Oh, I have no idea. Do you know where the Eagles are? The Philadelphia Eagles. Yeah. Yes, no, of course. The, the or, oh, the singer. Eagles, the band. the band. Don Henley. I'm sorry. Don Henley. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I didn't know there were so many Eagles. I'm sorry. Whatever. Yeah. Don Henley. I was he, trying to like Donovan and Nava. <laughs> what does he have to do with courthouses? So he, he uh, found out that they were going to tear it down. And he actually gave money to no restore kidding. it. Yeah. Don Henley did. Don Henley did. Yeah. He's That's living up awesome. to that I'm American you. pie. Yeah. So I went across the street. This is right after COVID. And I went to a little store and they told me the history about it. And I went, this is so cool. So I made friends with the lady and we exchanged numbers and now I'm friends with her. How oh, cool. And so that's what I like to do. So the Not Andy Reid, the former coach of the Philadelphia Eagles. Okay, you lost me there because I don't watch football. I'm sorry. It's, I don't know either just... anymore, but that's it's, it's very funny. That was where my mind went. Okay. I was like, you caught me off guard. I'm you're like, such a, you're such a man. Is that okay to say? Uh, sure, I think, yeah. <laughs> football. Uh. It's the first thing. You know, I ever wonder, like, Adam and Eve. Where was Adam when Eve took off? I bet he was watching the Eagles and the Falcons play. <laughs> That's Someone had to take day. that NFC title. That's we, we we're gonna. I'll get to him whenever <laughs> I get there. What were you thinking? Look what happened to us. Anyway, you couldn't Tebow the game. <laughs> What's right? the deal here? 
Oh, that's too funny. Now, you, you mentioned something just a moment ago. Um, the, the, the fishing pole and the shotgun and the dog and the yeah. books. I'm, I'm, I'm a track and all that. That yeah. fits. Guitar. You yeah. play guitar? I'm learning. Really? I'm trying to te- During uh, COVID, I did great. I had my little calluses and everything, and then I cut my finger with a knife. And my, my finger was like this. And so I stopped because it hurt so much. But now um, I haven't had time, but I do want my guitar. I want to buy one because I want to get back to it. Okay. Um, I married a man who's in the ministry, so I get, and I get to hang out with him now, and that's so awesome. Do a lot of music through the church and all that? No, just or? just ministering to people, you okay. know, uh, serving people, yeah. volunteering. Um, so, yeah, I love that. But I do want to get back into my guitar. I used to play the piano years and years ago really? as well. So I had some little talent, Mr. Holmes, I'm yeah. telling you. Hey, I'm not I'm surprised just, at all. I, I'm i surprised no. <laughs> in the, the, the variety of yeah. talent. We need to get you a, a, like a baby grand or something there in the office. Have you strike the keys? They would throw a shoe at me. <laughs> I'm not that great yet, but no, I used to play it and it was so awesome to, to learn some of those keys. And when I hear it, it's like, oh. It is such a, a dynamic instrument. Mm-hmm. Uh, you, you can, yeah. you can tell a story through the keys of through a piano. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you can do with that with many instruments, but I think the piano just has such a, a range in it. Um, it's, cl- it's so classical. Every, every, every instrument <laughs> has a classical note into that, you know? But the guitar, you can take it anywhere with you, and it's, it is so awesome. Um, I love my all my my brothers and my dad play the guitar, okay. and so and, and my son plays the guitar as well. So oh, wow. I want to be like the first girl to get in there and someday start playing some of the Eagles. My, I want Hotel a black California. acoustic electric guitar. That's what I want. Okay. I used to. I took Scotts. Scotts. Is it uh, Scott Thompson's? Scott, yeah. Oh, no it. kidding. I said, hey, I'm taking your uh, guitar during COVID, and uh, you're going to teach me how to play this thing. <laughs> so between him and, um, what is his name? I can see his face. Oh, my gosh. With R-O? Cloud. Cloud. Grant. Grant Cloud. Grant Cloud. Don't between, know. okay, Grant Cloud and, and Scott Thompson. Guys, what does this mean? What does this key mean? And they would text me. Try this and this and that. It's so awesome. So through Very them, cool. those two. They Not only me. learning guitar, learning guitar from, from coworkers. I feel yeah. like that's a, a double win there. Do you play? Uh, Tiny? Yeah. I was good whenever I was down in uh, San Antonio on the Cyrus One project. Uh, I was like, can I say that? I was like, yeah, sure. I can say that now. Uh, whenever I was down there staying in the hotel during yeah. the week, I, I was like, I don't know what to do with myself. Um, so why not? Yeah. Why don't you do the intro with your guitar? Instead of having the music. I don't have that ability <laughs> right now. <laughs> That'd be fun to see. That yeah. would be. That's, what, you, you practice. Practice makes practice. Yeah, that gives me a good reason to practice, too. Get get some there riffs in here to, to lead How us How about in. next time when we meet, you and I can just... Oh, Marcia, you're going to put me on the spot guitar. like that. Come on. I'll do my best. I'll get I'll, the accordion out. I'll, do you play accordion? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. I, it's, I would love to. All kinds of instruments are awesome. Yeah, well, the accordion too. That's just like a that's a wild yeah. piece of machinery there that yeah, somehow makes some very interesting you know, music. You know, who plays the accordion. Uh, we have a guy that plays the accordion. Oh, he ooh. showed me, and I'm like, oh my goodness! Come I don't on, know who it is, cause come I'm... on. Can I can I give you? Yeah, an he's an IT. Oh, she doesn't help me at all. I was thinking it was like Harold Wiles or somebody. Uh, he works here at Dallas. Um, oh, Greg Hammond? It's Victor. Is it really? I didn't know that. Sorry, Victor. Yeah. Really? Oh, that boy can play. I'm like, look at you. <laughs> he showed me a video of him. Those fingers. Just going to town on that thing. Yeah, it's pretty awesome. Huh, Victor, we got to. So, get Victor. We, 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 we got to get you to do some accordion playing yeah, yeah, here on yeah, the show yeah. at some point Bring in him time. in. In Grand Cloud. Yeah. All those guys. I mean, how many people do we have? Get an RO band going. I'm telling you. We can do this, Marcy. We've we've got the tools. We've got the microphones. Emma, we need you in this marketing. We need to market our band. I'll be a cheerleader. Play play at the next uh, Connect event, right? (laughs) All right, there you go. RO Roundup. uh, In a choir. We're calling those. One more question for you, Marcy. Let's get get back to your day. If you had to give some advice to young Marcy, what would you tell her? Just because he's cute 
doesn't mean that he's good. Say no. <laughs> Watch out for the cute boys. Watch out for the cute boys. Um, no. Learn how to cook at an early age, I think. Really? Yeah. Okay. Learn how to cook and read the Bible. I think I would have told her, hey, save your money. Learn how to cook at an earlier age and read your Bible at an early age. I feel like I'm so behind on that. Well, not the cooking because I love to cook. I love cooking. I love baking. You have a favorite meal, like a go-to whenever you have uh, new friends coming over? Mm, no. Have you had the, the, the cava? The cava? Um, siete, siete. It's called the Siete Chips and it's Fuego. Okay. The Fuego Chips with goat cheese. Oh my goodness. Ooh. I know. It's really good. Do you do like a, it just like melt it across the top or how, just, sprinkle yeah. it on there? And sometimes it breaks because it's so thin, but then yeah. it's the best when this, you eat. Then you go with another chip to save it. Yeah, yeah. And there's just you something You can stack it like three that. chips and then we pick up the goat cheese. Um, I just love food. <clears throat> I love I love food. I, I tell my husband, I'm like, you understand that I have to um, take care of myself because mama likes to eat. <laughs> I'm not a salad chick. I think it, it's, as with all things, it's yeah. f- finding a balance. Yeah. All right? You, you, yeah. Can, you can eat, eat a lot, but if you're eating well, right. that's very different than eating a lot and eating poorly. Yeah. Oh. I, do, I do a lot of intermittent fasting. The last time I ate was yesterday. I won six. Oh, wow. And not that I can go home and... I can eat... They said their stomach is about the size of your fist. So yeah. I look at my fist. I'm like, okay, what can I fit in this? Can I fit a pizza in there? Yeah, about a slice. <laughs> maybe some bread in there. Maybe chocolate, cinnamon, something in there. But if you learn how to eat small portions, that's all you need. I don't, I don't believe in strict diets. It's too concrete for me. Um, I'm with you there. I don't, I don't say no to a lot of food. Um, I like food. I like I like pastries, and so when I want when I want a pastry, I don't buy it. I make it because okay. I can I can put my own ingredients in there and and scarf them down. I don't detox. No, I don't believe in detox fruit, especially ones. I do detox in a certain other ways, but not in in fruit smoothies. There's so much sugar yeah. and stuff like that. So, um, but yeah, I I can eat whatever I want to in small portions. I think. I think we're getting the plates are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. Aren't they ever? This guy gives me a hard time. He says I eat like a bird. I said, No, I eat a normal amount. You're yeah. a human garbage disposal. Yeah, it's crazy how much you guys eat. Where do you guys put that stuff? I'm like, <laughs> but it's just it's just crazy. Um, but yeah, no, we love to eat. Food is good. Just don't take advantage of it. Marcy, this was so much fun. There, there I will had a blast. Absolutely, be around too. I don't know when, but we're we're definitely gonna have to do this again because it, y- you. you kept dropping little hints. Like that's a whole other story. I, went, well, I, I need to know the I stories. Have, we I gotta get way, them out there. At, at my age, you have a lot of stories. <laughs> you do have a lot of stories, and and I just became a grandma. Uh, oh, last congratulations! Year. Well, gonna, she, I shouldn't say I just. <clears throat> she's gonna turn a year old in a month, but that's my baby. That's my baby, and we're doing um, Bible stories. So because I don't get to see her, she's in Arizona, I park in the parking lot and I record stories of the Bible and then I send them to her. And I, because she has to, I I want her to get to know me. And and so I'm going to go to Arizona in November. And I don't want her to, who's this, who's this Mexican? She's she's a white baby. Sorry. (laughs) My daughter is white and she's my stepdaughter, but she's my, my baby. I've known her since she was six years old. And so. Um, and so I have this grandchild that is probably blonde with blue eyes. She's got blue eyes. I don't want her. To, Who's this Mexican lady? Why are you leaving me here? Is this the maid? <laughs> this is the cleaning lady. Um, so I want her to know grandma. So I, it's fun. No better it's way that, to. It's, it's that new um, season of my life, which is kind of awesome. Man. Yeah. I hope it's a. a v- very pleasant season, an enjoyable is. one. It is, it is, it is. Great food and beautiful colors. Yes, thank you. And uh, thank you for everyone jumping in today and watching this with Miss <laughs> Marcy the over here. Yeah. Oh. Uh, yeah, a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, think about the, uh, think about humanity. Try to find humility and humanity in what you do. Don't. Yeah. Don't go out of your way to be a pain to somebody else. It's not going to help you out. It's not going to help them out. 
uh, f- find a way to communicate and be, be kind. Love one another. Always say something kind to somebody. And if you said something unkind yesterday, go and apologize. You never know when is your last day here on earth. Couldn't wrap it up better okay. myself, Marcy. Yeah. Thank you. I'll see you next Thank week. You. Another great guest. Bye.